on this slide we prove part C and we just take some baby steps so we want to construct a check complex so we want to construct a check complex and we will just follow the definition of check complex while constructing this and uh, the ring S in general would be K of X0, X1 all the way to Xn so now first let us fix as N as 1 so we just have two variables x0 and x1 so this is c1 the c1 part of the check complex and then you just end at s of x0 x1 now s subscript xi is nothing but the ring s localized at xi and s subscript x0 x1 is ring s localized at x0 x1 again ring s is in n variables in p1 it is just k x0 x1 so now let us move a bit further to check complex of p2 so now you have three sets x0 x1 and x2 so just like the check complex we have this and then you end at x0 x1 x2 to 0 again a ring s in p2 will be k x0 x1 x2 now s subscript xi is localizing at xi so here you localize at xi xj here you localize at x0 x1 x2 the product yeah So it is localized at x0, x1, x2. Now this ring S is graded. This we have talked before in the theorem statement in a natural way. So since this original ring is graded, these localized rings are also graded. So you take the grading of the original ring and once you localize it, the graded parts also get localized. So the grading is natural. So let us be slightly more specific. So S of X I S J is nothing but you have this S T part of the ring and you localize it. Yeah. So you just take in the definition of S and then you have localized it. So this is nothing but the degree D elements of the localized ring. So where degree of numerator minus degree of denominator is D. Now this S subscript XI XJ what we have written for P2 is we have written complex C1, we have written complex C2, C3 and 0. So this check complex is natural, naturally graded. Yeah, as we have just shown above. So that is the CP part is naturally graded. So for P2 we have written C1, this is C2 and then we have C3. So if the complex is naturally graded, then we have made a remark before that it carries over to the cohomology groups. So the cohomology group is naturally graded. So HP is naturally graded and its degree D part is what we are interested in. So this is the degree D part of the complex now we want to make an important remark that this ring localized at x0 x1 x2 is a infinite dimensional space yeah so it could be generated by x0 x1 x2 or x0 minus 2 x1 x3 or so on basically of the form of monomials like this x0 superscript alpha 0 x1 superscript alpha 1 x2 superscript alpha 2 where each alpha is a integer so notice that h2 we have to determine so h2 is nothing but the co-kernel of this map why because s subscript x0 x1 x2 goes entirely to 0 so the kernel is entire part s subscript x0 x1 x2 and the image is what comes in from the product here 
and that is why h2 is the co-kernel and h1 for p1 is 0 which we have written above because the complex is very small you know the only map we have is on to map so kernel over image is uh, 0 for h1 in p1 on this slide we finally discussed the general case of pn so we have already shown the case of p2 before we form the check complex by simply following the definition of the check complex so you can check say for example in the case of p2 co-boundary composed with co-boundary is 0 and you will get this precisely by following the construction of the check complex so the pth part here is nothing but you take the ring s where ring s is in n plus 1 variables k x0 comma x1 comma x2 all the way to xn and then you take ring S and you localize it. So you localize it on its standard open sets. So the open sets are x0 is not 0, x1 is not 0, x2 is not 0, x3 is not 0, all the way to xn is not 0. So the pth part just consists of p open sets. And you have just given some order to these. Uh, to the missing variable just like in check complex now the ring s has a standard structure on it a standard graded structure and this graded structure carries over to the localized ring so the graded structure does not change after localizing so let us write down this complete complex so we have c1 here S localized at each of these set then you have C2 here then C3 and so on so this now is the important part so you're localizing here but one of the variables is missing say XI is missing that's why we have put a hat on it all the way to XN and in the end you have just this just like in the case of p2 we have seen now here is the cohomology group which we want to calculate so hn is what we want to calculate and hn is nothing but the co-kernel of the map phi why because this entire s subscript the last complex uh, gets mapped to zero so the kernel contains of the entire s subscript x0 x1 x2 and so on and uh, just to recall the basis element here are so this is an infinite dimensional space and the bases are thus just these monomials formed by this product where each alpha i is an integer so this is the product here and hn is nothing but the co-kernel of phi yeah so the entire s subscript x1 times x2 all the way to xn will everything will go to zero so everything lies in the kernel so you have to take s x0 comma x1 all the way to xn and you have to modulo out the image of phi so let us see what is this image of phi so image of phi is something like this so uh, just following check cohomology you have minus 1 raised to the power of i because the ith index is missing fi is just some polynomial in ring s and obviously we are considering homogeneous polynomials now once you uh, add up all the fractions you have to take the common denominator common denominator will be x0 times x1 times x2 xi and so xi is now included in the, in the denominator so we have to multiply it by in the numerator <coughs> so this is the image of phi so this is the image formed so what does it look like so it con consists of monomials of the form x0 exponent r0 x1 exponent r1 all the way to xn exponent rn with at least one of these ri's greater or equal to zero so this is important at least one of these ri's greater or equal to zero now you can see this ri right here 
yeah it will be greater than zero if you know if i contribute something to it also so you will have at least one ri greater or equal to zero now we want to find the co-kernel of the map so you have a subscript x0 x1 all the way to xn modulo image of phi this is also the definition of hn because entire s subscript x0 times x1 all the way to xn goes to zero so what is this this is nothing but all monomials whose exponents are now negative they are strictly negative because you have taken out all the exponents which have at least one positive term so anything so if there is at least one positive you have taken them out modular them out so whatever is remaining is strictly negative so as you know the cohomology group is now a graded group because the complex itself is a graded and a graded complex carries over to graded cohomology groups this we have actually mentioned in some remarks before so what does the degree d part look like so the degree d part now again d is negative here so degree d part is just these monomials x0 exponent r0 x1 exponent r1 all the way to xn exponent rn and when you take the sum from i equals to 0 to n of these ri you have d and d is negative now if d is greater than minus n minus 1 the cohomology groups are 0 uh, this is obvious because there are not enough variables to get the degree yeah, you cannot even get d because there are not enough variables so not enough variables to form the basis so the first non-trivial group you will have is when d is equal to minus n minus 1 and the basis would be just this product x0 times x1 all the way to xn so this is just one basis and therefore we identify it with the base space k So if d is less than minus n minus 1 then we can obviously take these monomials and put them together to get something in degree d. So you count monomials of degree so you can count these monomials of degree minus d minus n plus 1 in variables 1 by xi now this I have already shown in bunch of examples in the previous uh, in the previous uh, recording so notice that in h0 in the global space we have the bases are generated by these xi's and here we are talking about d less than minus n minus 1 the bases are generated by 1 by xi so we have this duality we have hn pn op and d is iso to the dual of vector space now we have already given examples of this in the previous recording if you've forgotten it you should look at it immediately Yeah, for all d as integers so let us look at what the pairing is so you have hn pn opn d and you are pairing it with this zeroth cohomology group So it is just a natural pairing as we will just see so here, here you have monomials as the basis say x0 alpha 0 x1 alpha 1 so this is just a product yeah and all the summation of 
i equals to 0 to and all these alpha i is just t here you have x0 beta 0 x1 beta 1 xn beta n so sum of beta i is minus t minus n minus 1 yeah as we have in the space op and what we have mentioned and then you just take product of these two monomials and what you get is a product again x0 alpha 0 x1 x0 exponent alpha 0 plus beta 0 x1 exponent alpha 1 plus beta 1 then xn exponent beta n plus alpha n and you can see when you add d plus minus t minus n minus 1 you get minus n minus 1.